Before we get into the video, I need you guys to do me a favour. Number one, like the video. Also comment, let me know your thoughts on the story. Manchester gangster Dale Cregan is known throughout the world for his heinous crimes. Crimes that frankly shook the nation and the entire police force. So much so that at the height of Dale Cregan's exploits, there was a £50,000 reward for his arrest. Now Dale Cregan was a gangster and a drug dealer, a gang leader as well. He was ruthless, methodical in his approach with an ardent impulse to push the agenda past the point of no return. His mottled history exposed this, not just with the M of two police officers, but also with the feud with the short crime family, and effectively both son and dad in two separate incidences. Now, Gangster Dale Cregan was born in Thameside General Hospital on June 6th, 1983. Parents, Paul Cregan and Marie Cregan. He was raised in Droyston, Manchester, with his brother and sister. Now, Dale's dad left the family home and went on to marry a Greater Manchester police officer. By the time Dale was a teenager, his school, Little Moss High School, considered Dale a challenge. He was quiet and used to sit at the back of the classroom but was in the bottom set for classes and his reading was way below his age group at the bottom percentile. Now rather than get an education, they was regularly spotted in alleyways and outside shops in the Droyston estate, armed with blades and snap bags of weed dealing. And at 19 years old, they all spent time in Tenerife. He used his time to rip off older holiday makers and entice them to spend thousands of pounds on timeshares. When colleagues were trying to scout the same customers, Dale was said to have pulled out a blade and pressed it to his colleague's stomach. He then partnered with the local dealers to start selling gear too. After three years, Dale returned back to the UK. So, by the age of 22, Dale Cregan was a big-time dealer in Class A gear, predominantly Coke. He also sold Peds. Now, on this side, he continued to be an enforcer and also a moneylender. Now, it was alleged that Dale was clearing £20,000 a week in profit. However, he listed his occupation as a plasterer. So, quickly building a reputation up north as a gangland enforcer, Dale offered his services to crime bosses in both Liverpool and Manchester. With his newfound fame and fortune and reputation, Dale toured the world, while also learning MMA and things like jiu-jitsu, kickboxing and judo. One-eyed Cregan, who lost his left eye due to an apparent situation in Thailand, was said to have tried to not pay a bill at a resort in Patea. In the incident, a blade was used and the left eye was apparently taken. Now, Dale was paid thousands of pounds to chase up drug debts. Now, once back home, fixed with an onyx eye and learning MMA, Dale felt as though he had to prove himself even more. Dale had a reputation to curb his victims by making them lay face down on the curb, mouth open. You can guess what he did next. Dale's crime afforded him luxuries, making it possible to own a Range Rover, BMW, motorbike and also Rolexes. The Manchester madman also spent his money on a catch of GUNs, including pistols, mat 10s and even gr and Uzis. With the birth of his son, Dale began to work even harder to ensure that no rival gangster would mess with him or his family. And he established links in Holland. Dale then brought more GUNs. Acting as an enforcer, Dale began taxing other dealers. He would regularly conduct deals worth up to £40,000 worth of coke and then in less than 24 hours, he would get his gang to dress in dark clothing and wear balaclavas to snatch the gear back from the people he sold it to. Because the other dealers back then were often taking the gear on tick or loan or consignment, Dale then demanded another £40,000 for the product that was taken, other ways they would be caid. Now Dale's downfall came when he went against Manchester's short crime family. Dale and the short crime family had a history, as Mark was known to pick on Dale as a child. On May 25th, 2012, Dale Cregan and three mates had travelled to the Cotton Tree pub. After exiting the car in a car park, Dale entered the pub and scanned the room for his intended victim, that being David Short. At the time, David had gone to the bathroom and left his family playing poor and eating food. Dale put on his balaclava, took out his pistol, he then fired 
in specific directions. They all pressed the trigger seven times and Mark Short was struck, along with three other family members, that being John Collins, Ryan Pridding and Michael Boucher. When David came out of the toilet, he saw his son laying on the pub floor, red going cold. David held his son in his arms as he was soon pronounced dead, sobbing uncontrollably. Now David was alleged to have told everyone he could think of that because Dale had K'd his son, David would now K Dale's son. Now Dale found out. So David was distraught. He went to the cemetery to visit his son three times a day. Dale knew this. So Dale and his mate, Anthony Wilkinson, had hid in the cemetery waiting for David to turn up. When he didn't, Dale and the mates went to David's home in Folkestone Road, Clayton. As David was unloading furniture from his car, Dale and Anthony appeared. David was struck. He was then chased through his own home and into the alleyway at the side of the house. He was then trapped, ensnared. Again, David was struck by both Dale and Anthony Wilkinson, and it proved fatal. To make sure that David would not survive, Dale then used a girl. Now, please quickly launch the M investigation. Every friend, every colleague, every acquaintance and every family member was questioned multiple times. A massive police presence was also seen in Droysden. A Dale had been on the run at the time and there was a reward for up to £50,000 for his arrest. And when he found out that his family was for all intents and purposes being harassed, Dale then put his plan into action. On September 18th of 2012, Dale Cregan had pretended to be a concerned member of the public and he dialed 999 requesting police officers to attend an address in Longdendale, Greater Manchester, describing a burglary in process. The Manchester police had dispatched 32-year-old PC Fiona Bone and 23-year-old Nicola Hughes to the scene just before 11am. As the two female officers walked up the pathway of Abbey Gardens, Dale appeared and he had aimed his pistol before pressing the trigger at multiple officers. Dale then launched a grill before making a quick exit. Dale then drove along the M67 and went to Hyde Police Station to explain what had just transpired. Dale told police officers at the front desk I'm wanted by the police and I've just done two coppers in. As he was handcuffed, he told officers calmly, I dropped the GUN at the scene. You were hounding my family, so I took it out on you. Now for the incident, Dale was given a two whole life sentence. Since his sentence, he spent time in strange ways, where he was able to convince officers that Dale was suffering from some type of psychological issues and needed to be transferred to a hospital instead, where he would have more freedom. Now it's no secret and no denying it, but Dale Cregan was the worst type of person imaginable. He was a gangster with no honour or morals or even rules for conduct. When he was questioned as strange ways, Dale says that one of his regrets was he wished that the two police officers were not women, that they were men instead. Stay safe, safe.